dysmenorrhea is the topic. And dysmenorrhea essentially is a uterine pain that um, a woman experiences during menses. And there's a long list of uh, uh, secondary causes. So let's talk a little bit about the etiology. Now, the primary causes, uh, of course, is, is just um, due to the actual uterine uh, contracting. And in addition to the contractions, you also have uh, uterine ischemia. And this is uh, thought to have been uh, mediated by prostaglandins. And these prostaglandins essentially are involved in the uh, uh, vasoconstriction of the vessels, and they're also involved in the stimulation of the myometrium. So that's a key player in primary um, dysmenorrhea. Now, secondary dysmenorrhea is uh, due to pelvic abnormalities. For example, endometriosis is a very common cause. Uterine fibroids, very common uh, gynecologic problem. And uh, quite a long list of others, but these are sort of the, the main ones. So what are some of the symptoms? Well, obviously, you know, the main symptom, symptom of dysmenorrhea is lower abdominal pain during menses usually begins before menses or the first day of menses lasts about one to two days and some variation of course uh, menstrual cramps uh, lower back pain can also be associated and then a lot of nonspecific symptoms as well nausea and vomiting headache things like that so how do you diagnose it well, the diagnosis is really just based on the history and the review of systems, past medical history, sexual history, things like that. There's really no actual test uh, that is specific for dysmenorrhea. A pelvic exam is also important to do. What you're really trying to do in the evaluation of dysmenorrhea is try to rule out any uh, causes of her pain that could be something other than dysmenorrhea. So, for example, if she tells you that this pain is new, it's never happened before, or there's a fever, or there's some sort of vaginal discharge, basically what you're trying to do is rule out any cause of pelvic pain uh, that is other than dysmenorrhea. Because if it's, if it's just dysmenorrhea, then you can treat it usually without too much uh, difficulty. But if it's a cause of, of pelvic pain other than dysmenorrhea, then that needs to be explored. So some of the tests that you would do uh, to explore uh, another cause of her pelvic pain would be things like a pregnancy test. Perhaps you're looking for like an ectopic pregnancy. Pelvic ultrasound. That is a very important test. Oftentimes this test can tell you so many things. Uh, pelvic masses, for example, uh, can be checked with pelvic ultrasound, for example, if a woman has uterine fibroids. Cervical cultures also, if you're exploring uh, something other than dysmenorrhea, that will uh, guide you uh, to perhaps an infection. And then when you really can't find an, a reason for her pelvic pain, then you do a laparoscopy. And that will be something that will allow you to directly visualize what's going on in her um, pelvic organs. So if you're convinced that this is just dysmenorrhea, then how do you treat it? Well, by far the most common is giving an NSAID. And the NSAID will allow the patient to have a relief of pain and it will also inhibit the prostaglandins which are the main players they're the ones that remember cause the uterine contractions and the ischemia that leads to these 
symptoms. And an example of that is, of course, ibuprofen. Another um, uh, thing that you can suggest to the patient, which is something very basic, is a heating pad or a hot water bottle. Now let's say you've tried that and it's unsuccessful. Then where do you go from there? Well, the next uh, medication is an oral contraceptive pill, usually an estrogen-progesterone combination. And what this does, it suppresses uh, ovulation. So that, that's the next step. Now if that doesn't work, then you can try other treatments, non-drug treatments. There's a long list, acupuncture, hypnosis, etc. And remember, I'm talking specifically about treatment for dysmenorrhea. Uh, I'm not speaking of treatment for any other cause of pelvic pain. This is strictly for someone who has been diagnosed absolutely with dysmenorrhea. Her pelvic pain is not from some other a source or a cause. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 21 year old woman comes to the student health clinic complaining of painful periods for the past few years. She describes the pain as moderate to severe, crampy in nature and located in her lower abdomen. She has never been sexually active because as she tells you she is waiting until she is married. The patient's pelvic uh, exams are normal as is a pap smear which returns five days later. The most appropriate next step in the management of this patient is, well, if she's never been sexually active and she's telling you the honest truth, then chances are she's not pregnant, so that can get rid of choice B. Referring her to a psychiatrist, I don't think that's really appropriate. There's nothing to indicate in the clinical vignette that this is a psychiatric disorder. Uh, perform a dilation and curatage, a little too invasive and also her pap smear was normal, so there's no indication for that. Uh, how many do we have left? Two. Progesterone withdrawal test, uh, probably not in terms of um, relevance at this point, but a therapeutic trial of an anti-prostaglandin medication for her dysmenorrhea would definitely be the correct answer. And then one more. A 27-year-old woman comes to the office because of crampy lower abdominal pain that begins at the onset of her menstrual period and usually resolves by the third day of her period. This menstrual pain has gotten progressively more severe over the past eight months and often causes her to miss work days. Nausea, diarrhea, and low back pain often occur in association with the spasmatic lower abdominal pain. Salicylates do not decrease the pain. She denies any dyspareunia or a change in the menstrual flow. She uses condoms for contraception. Pelvic exam is unremarkable at this time you should. Alright, let's go through this. A. Oral contraceptive pills to induce suppress ovulation. Well, we'll keep that in mind. That could be a choice. Recommend ibuprofen and an application of a heating pad or hot water bottle to the lower abdomen. Well, that's a definitely a good choice. Refer for psychiatric counseling. Well, there's nothing in the in the uh, clinical v vignette to to suggest that this is she's suffer, suffering from any psychiatric illness. So I would probably say no. Schedule her for diagnostic laparoscopy. Well, that is at the very end of the road. You know that is you know you've done all kinds of tests and you don't have any answers as to why she has pelvic pain. So that certainly wouldn't be what you would do as at this time. Uh, schedule a transvaginal ultrasound. Pelvic ultrasounds do give you a lot of diagnostic uh, uh, information, but at this time she doesn't need one. If um, you were convinced that it was a, uh, a cause of pelvic pain other than dysmenorrhea, then yeah, you would do it to explore perhaps you know uterine fibroids or endometriosis. So you're left with A and B. Well, I would first do B, and if that works, great. If it doesn't work, then I would proceed to choice A. So the correct answer at this time would be B.